Hello, and welcome to another live devotional. I know yesterday I didn't share one, but that was because of my son's birthday, and we were excited to celebrate that with him. And we also had a service that we had um, for that night. So if you missed that, um, you can go to Hope Church Midway um, on that page, or you can go and look in YouTube, just type in Hope Church Midway, and you can see the message from last night. And uh, also it's on my page as well. You can just look down if I have the link to the YouTube page. And I wanted to talk about what was discussed last night in um, the sermon. So if you didn't see it, it's okay. You can check it out later to get kind of more in depth of what we're talking about today. Uh, but I wanted to kind of piggyback on that. And so I entitled this one, um, The Bible Is. And I just put a couple dots there kind of like if you fill in the blank. The Bible is a lamp unto my feet. The Bible is the Word of God. The Bible is, I mean, there's a lot of things that we can say that sounds really good um, from the get-go of just, this is what the biblical answer is. This is how it should be. Um, but we really want to look at today and how we see the Bible personally um, without a uh, Sunday school type answer, but just really what does the Bible mean to you. And so I wanted to look at Psalm 19 today. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful psalm and it starts off the first six chapters really just talking about the glory of God and the, the heavens declaring his glory and just how amazing God is. Uh, but I want to look at the next part starting in verse 7 and that's going to look at us today and see where we're at in our mentality and our thought process when it comes to the Bible and how we look at it ourselves. So again, as always, please check out um, Psalm for Yourself when we're done. So again, Psalm 19, make sure you check that out for yourself later on. Um, but again, we're going to start at verse 7. It says, The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commands of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. Now, is that how you see that? Um, is that how you see the Bible? And the reason I'm asking that is because um, last night, again, we shared this uh, in the sermon. You can look at that later and feel free to check that out. But we talk about the area of conviction versus condemnation. And what we're seeing is conviction is a good thing. It's something to help us out to see this is the direction we need to go. You might be going in this area here, but now we, you're able to go to this part here as well. And so we want to look and see that that's a good part of conviction. Condemnation is another story altogether. Condemnation is when we're feeling horrible about ourselves and feeling we can never live up to something and feeling that we're always going to be having a, um, a life that's not going to be moving anywhere forward. And so that's really that condemnation area. And so right here, when it's talking in, in Psalm 19, verse 7 through 11, talking about everything, reviving the soul, uh, making us wise, bringing joy to the heart, giving insight for living, lasting forever, fair, desirable, uh, great warnings yet a reward. That doesn't normally seem to be a lot of what most of us see the Bible as when a lot of us don't take it in that way. We don't take it to see it as, wow, it's such a great thing. It's, it's reviving me. It's trustworthy. And then the issue is because we feel condemnation a lot of times when we read the Bible. We'll see people doing things and we're like, oh man, I've done that myself. And I know I've uh, fallen short. I've missed the mark. And I know I shouldn't be doing this, this or that. And again, Conviction, that's a good thing to say, okay, I don't need to go this direction anymore. I can now go this direction. That's a positive. And when we look at the Bible and we see that, then that should make us say, that does revive my soul. I'm not going this direction anymore. Now I'm going this direction. I am now bringing joy because I'm not having to go down this path anymore. I can now go down this path. And it is sweeter than honey. It is more desirable than gold because I'm going in great places and the places that God wants me to be. This is where I'm at and this is what I have the ability to. Um, to go now because of the conviction that God has given me. And that's an exciting thing. Again, condemnation, you're going to feel bad and say, I'm on this road. I'm never going to get off this road. I'm horrible for being on this road. You're never going to get off of there. That's not what God brought. And that's not what Jesus brought for us. That's not why he came to this world in the first place. He came that we would not be condemned, but that we would find love. 
and we would see that this is what his love is. The Bible is God's love letter to you and to me. And that's how we can see it. And that's why the psalmist is able to say this. It's not like uh, David had never seen uh, reasons to feel bad about himself or to feel bad that he had sinned or anything else like that. I mean, there's tons and tons of psalms and verses where David has just cried out saying, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've done wrong. I know Psalm 38, 52, I mean, a bunch of different ones. Um, then he talks about all the parts where he does feel that conviction, but he looks to see the beauty of what that means to move to this next level. And that's what God's asking for you and for me, to look into his word every single day and see the positives in there. Say, okay, if I am going down this direction, now I can go down this direction. And I can see this loving God who cares for me and, and helps me and wants me to do better for my life and wants to see better for my life. And so in these times, when we're able to have hopefully a little bit more time to do things and you know, not as much uh, time to go out anywhere, obviously, and, and, uh, and so on and so forth in this area of pause, I want to encourage you to look into his word. But when we look into his word, to look at it in the right way to see it as all these wonderful things, reviving your soul, making you wiser, bringing joy to your heart, giving insight for living, looking at uh, uh, of everything being fair and true, desirable, sweet, a warning, yet a great reward when we do this. Now, like he even brings up what happens to his own life when he has this conviction, right? In verse 12, as we continue on, it says, how can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. This is such an awesome part. He's saying, look, I, I understand what your word can do. It can convict me and tell me I'm going this direction. Now I need to start going this direction. And I know that there's a lot of stuff that's happening in my heart that I don't even realize that I need to ask for forgiveness about. That I need to realize I need to have different attitudes than I've had before. I have different motives. And, and I can see all these other things that I can easily pass on and say it's not a big deal and it's not you know we can always make excuses for ourselves otherwise we would be changing our actions in the first place right and so this is what he's talking about his word helps to teach this into our hearts god's word helps us speak this into our life and then he says right after that too um keep your servant from deliberate sins from things that i know that i'm doing wrong and that's another part of what his word does in our lives we're able to not do things that we flat out know are wrong we're able to move on from there as well. This is such an awesome part. And it ends this way. Verse 14. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Why is he saying this at the end when he's talking about the amazing, amazing parts of God, the amazing things of his word and asking God to search his heart? Why is he now saying here, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you? Well, because the more that we get in God's word, the more that's going to impact how we think. It's going to impact how we talk because, again, it's, that's impacted how we think. Everything else changes the moment we start getting his word into our hearts. Every single part of it um, switches up because it's switching up our mentality. Our entire mentality is changed by the scriptures. And so we're not doing things wrong anymore. We're not going on the right path. We're not thinking negative thoughts about people anymore. We're not thinking loving ways towards people Every single thing changes, and this is exactly what David is talking about here. He says, this is why it is so sweet. This is why it is so great. And this is why I know that the Lord is my rock and my redeemer. He helps me out. He helps me get me from one place to another where I want to be, where I desire to be. And we are allowed to see that in our lives. So I want to pray for you as um, you're using this time, hopefully, to really pray more and to look into the Word more that you'll look at it in the right way and see what the Bible is to you. See, is it all these wonderful things? And if it's not, and start praying, God, help me to change my mentality. Change how I think about your word. Change how I look into your word. And you'll see that once you make that change, it'll change your thinking. It'll change how you speak. It'll change everything about you for the better. You'll be the better version of you that you want to be to begin with. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you so much that we're able to look into your word today, that we're able to have this pause and see what you have to say. God, may we look into your word and always look at it with joy desire to see it. God, may it be worth more to us than anything else. God, may it be sweet to us. May we get wisdom from it. God, maybe you direct us and help us. May you point out anything that is hidden or motives that need to be changed or thoughts that need to be changed. God, I pray that you would speak into our lives, God, that we would have everything switch because of what your word has done inside us and through us. God, we know that you change us from the inside out and you do that by us getting your word into our hearts and into our minds. And I pray that you would continue to do that. We thank you so much 
that through this time of chaos, confusion, and everything else, we can still get strength and get even stronger than we've ever been before in your word and in who you are. We thank you for all you're doing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So again, I want to encourage you, if you did miss last night, um, check it out again, Hope Church Midway. Uh, the link there to the YouTube page is there, or you can look at um, uh, my page as well. It's on there, or you can just go to YouTube yourself and type in Hope Church Midway and see it. It will really expand on this thought that we were talking about today, and I think it will really bless you. And plus, we have um, some amazing worship pastors that were leading us as well, which is always good for the soul. God bless you, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.